Series. This is uh, number four out of the, out of the series, uh, Bridgeport series we're doing here for the Maker Barn. And uh, this one's about mounting the vise and getting it, uh, getting it trued up. It's inev inevitable. You're going to have to remove the vise from time to time to put on something like a rotary table or some other device. So, uh, or clamp up something directly on the table. So when you put the vise back on, you need to get it spot on with the uh, x-axis. It has to be trued up with the machine. And we're going to go through that today. Uh, here's a few things we need. This is a little indicator holder. It's kind of neat. They're very common. It's a common design anyway, and uh, it'll hold this uh, test indicator. A test indicator is a little different. A dial, we could use a dial indicator. Test indicators work a little bit better. A test indicator has this little arm that goes off to the side here. You can see that. And this particular one is in millimeters, so it reads uh, out in uh, one hundredth of a millimeter per graduation. We're not making a measurement, we're just making a comparison type of a measurement. What we want to do is uh, true it up so the needle does not move when we move across the vise. You'll see that in a minute. So it doesn't matter whether we use a, a metric or inch or whatever we use here, just as long as we can see, uh, see movement. And of course you'll need a, a good three-quarter inch wrench to, to bolt the vise down. Let me, uh, let me go grab the vise and uh, We'll, we'll set it in place and uh, start getting it trued up. Now I set the vise in place. It has some keys on the bottom which get you close. But um, when you set it in place, kind of set it in the middle of that movement. And uh, we're gonna, what we're going to do is take the left hand, is what I prefer, it could be done either way, but the left hand one bolt, I'm going to cinch it down fairly tight. And we're going to use this left hand as a pivot point. And uh, let me move these over. The right hand one, we're going to, we're going to put it in place and tighten it up a little bit. We want to tighten up enough uh, so that the uh, vise is pulled down a bit. By the way, make sure the base of the vise is absolutely clean. Table is absolutely clean, free of chips. If you have a chip underneath here, then you're not going to be able to do a good job. Let's see, let's mount our uh, indicator in, in the indicator holder. There's a small notch in here. You loosen up this screw. You put There's a dovetail notch and you can use the dovetail on the top of the indicator and uh, just tighten that up in there. Make sure the indicator is secure. And this mounts in the, the on the on the spindle like this. So and I'm, you could just move this there's a little friction down on there. I'm gonna move that back till it just touches, try to rotate this, get it fairly square. And make sure we can move the table up and get an indicator reading. All right, got to start. All right, I've got the GoPro uh, <laughs> taped down so we can see the, so we can watch that dial indicator, and um, we'll see how this works out. The, like I said, the the left hand. Uh, Bolt is tightened up a bit, and this one's a bit loose, so it's just, just a little snug. And uh, what I'm going to do first of all is move the cross feed so I can get that indicator zero out. I'm going to go ahead and lock the cross feed. It moves a little bit, so which is normal. There we go, right on zero. And um, let's make our first movement. I'm going to crank the table this way a bit. Now, I've got quite a bit of movement there. So what I'm going to do is take the soft mallet and tap the vise. What I'm going to do is bring this back to almost twice the amount of error. The reason is, is that the, 
the rotation point here and this are, are just about twice the distance apart. If, if, so the, the effect is about twice. So when I bring it back to where we were before, we should be, aha, uh -huh. okay, see very little movement. I can go ahead and, and you can watch the needle as it is, or you can just go ahead and re-zero the table, which is sometimes a little bit easier to, to see. So I can re-zero the table. And uh, it's pretty close. Now I'm going to crank the table and watch for movement. Well, we hit that on pretty well just the first time, it looks like. But we went a little bit too far, didn't we? It, see, it moved the other way. So I'm going to move, I'm going to move the device slightly over. This time I'm going to put it up right about zero because I've moved quite a ways here. So anyway, that should work. I can use the, the fast V, that helps out. And basically what you want to do is get into a situation like this where you where you can swing that indicator back and forth. Let's see. What I'm going to do is tighten down the linear a little bit. Okay. All right. And I'm going to zero this. When you start moving, you see that things. What we're actually seeing is the movement that's in the in the ways. Pretty sensitive measurement. <laughs> so, okay, that's good. Yeah, about let's say plus one division. That's pretty good. I mean, I might. Ever slightly bump it. Now we'll go ahead and lock it down. We're happy with what we got and test it again. It chances are it'll move. I'm gonna, I'm gonna test it going the same direction each time. Fast speed comes in handy for this. Now it's at plus two. And certainly went plus two. I have to say that's pretty good. So go ahead and make sure the bolts are tight down good and uh, you're all good to go. It's not too hard once you, once you kind of get the feel of uh, when you move things, how much they'll move. But anyway, I hope that helps you out. Um, and uh, next time I think we'll do some work holding uh, things in the, in the next episode. Thank you for watching.